Good afternoon. My name is Paula Gomez. Yeah. I'm very happy to be here. I'd like to thank you all. And I am CEO of Epistemic, a Brazilian company. Epistemic means that, that which is related to knowledge. And I'm here to present to you a solution that gives knowledge to the patient about an incoming seizure. So it's a very new and revolutionizing solution. It's a prediction software. I, I'd like to start with a short video. For people who suffer from epilepsy, life can feel limited. Many people miss out on even the smallest of life's pleasures because they can't know when seizures will strike. But that's about to change with a new device from Epistemic. Epilepsy sufferers can get an average of 25 minutes advance notice of when a seizure will strike. Epistemic is a non-invasive device that relies on electrodes to monitor the brain. When it detects that a seizure is coming, it sends a signal to both the wearer's cell phone or wearable and the wearer's caregiver. Now, seizures don't have to hold you back. And life can be as bright as you've always wanted it to be. Find more information today at www.epistemic.com.br. So we know that one third of patients do not respond to drugs or surgery. Can you imagine how a solution like this would help them? We developed an algorithm based on chaos theory that uses univariant EEG signals. That means that we need only two electrodes to monitor the patient. This methodology uh, finds anomalies before a seizure happens, and these anomalies are really hard to find because they happen too fast. For that, we calculate two parameters, PS1 and PS2. And uh, these two parameters that are in the slide must change simultaneously in order to give an alarm. We have applied for, we have uh, filed for patents both in Brazil and in PCT, the international process. We also have publications in the area and have presented the same project in IWSP7 in Melbourne. We have been awarded with some important prizes and I like to emphasize here that we were here among the six finalists in the same Shark Tank competition in 2015. We started this project seven years ago, developing the methodology and doing research, and then applied it manually to a small database and then presented it here in 2015. Since then, we developed an automated software. We, um, we upgraded it until it runs in real time. That means that it processes data faster than it reads the EEG and can be used in real time. Then we applied it to a major database and I'm going to show you the results now. We have a first prototype uh, for the electronics and we've talked to all major epilepsy centers in Brazil and made a partnership with one of them for future clinical trials. The basis we applied uh, our software to our MITs with 664 hours of EEG and epilepsy, the European database, with 27,000 hours of EEG. We only used uh, signals that were measured with scalp electrodes because we want to build an uninvasive device. There were more than 1,700 seizures and more than 70% of patients had focal epilepsy. Here, we had to define what we consider true positives and false positives. True positives, we consider that, um, that a period of 60 minutes before a seizure would be ideal to receive an alarm. Therefore, all alarms that occurred in the window of 60 minutes before a seizure were considered true positives. Those that happened with more than 60 minutes were considered false, posit false positives. We set the parameters for the most sensitive case, would be like a person that always needs to be alerted, uh, as a um, factory worker that likes to drive and likes sports, for example. And we got 93% of true positives and 21% 
of false positives. The graph shows the distribution of alerts before a seizure. We can see that most seizures occurred 30 minutes in anticipation of, uh, most alerts occurred with 30 minutes in anticipation of a seizure. And uh, it's good to emphasize here that we can change parameters for different patients and for different requirements. Now I'd like to show a little bit of our team and our office. So the cap you saw in the video is our first prototype. We tested it on only on healthy volunteers, and the good news here is that we had no false positives. <laughs> we now have to uh, make this device smaller, more comfortable, aesthetically fit, and with a longer lasting battery. Then we'll go for clinical trials and certifications. With the prize, we would be able to finish this prototype and start testing and would literally help millions of lives. So we need uh, $180,000 to do so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Who wants to start? I'll jump in. So tell us more about the alert function. Um, so it alerts the person who's being monitored but also a caretaker, is that right? Yes, so it connects, uh, it has a Bluetooth connection with the cell phone and it can, it can alert anyone you register in, the, in, in an app that we're, going, we're developing. So each person would download an app to a smartphone? Yes. To be notified? Yes. Okay. I just want to know, you brought chocolate but you didn't bring a prototype of the device? <laughs> well, because <laughs> the main thing we have is the software. That is the most innovative part. I think these guys also have, have prototypes that we even can partner with, you know, and work together. But our software is really innovative. Okay. <laughs> I brought Brazilian chocolate. Come on, it's very good. <laughs> but can you, bring, can you describe the hardware to us, for instance, I, I might have missed it, but all I saw was a box on a hat. So does it have two electrodes in it? or is it, it has how does two it dry electrodes in it, and uh, the electronic part is behind the head, so we really have to make it smaller now, but it's enough to make clinical trials. Um, so it reads here, it has wires connecting to the, to the electronic part. The electronic part is kind of big because it, it's not only to read the AGs, it has to process all our software and detect the seizure. And uh, that's why we're working on a smaller version and on, on battery because it consumes a lot of battery. Do you find that you have to, uh, well I guess you have a pretty small data set, but do you presume the location of electrodes will determine the sensitivity of the device? Yes, I do. We, we, if, we will do analysis with more electrodes, but we find that, uh, that, but we find with, well, we had 180 patients, so it's not that small, and they had different kind of epilepsy, and we had 93% of detection, so it's quite high. Mostly because we can find uh, anomalies with 30 minutes before a seizure. So there's time to get to every part of the brain. That was 180 patients from the data set or that you collected yourself? No, that's from the data set. Yeah, you only collected yourself 30 uh, or something. Right? The ones that we collected ourselves were only healthy volunteers. The five healthy volunteers. Yeah. Okay. So, Paula, uh, I mean, this has been the holy grail uh, <laughs> yeah. for uh, many of us working with epilepsy for many years. Yes. And, uh, and if we find something that works with scalp electrodes, it would be fantastic. But the devil is in the detail, of course, and there have been many previous attempts that did not work. Uh, could you just tell you a little bit more on the, on the validation work that you've been done and you've been doing with, with those databases? Uh, what, how, how were the patients selected? 
uh, for, for, for those trials? What seizure types did they have? And what was the seizure frequency? Because if the seizure frequency was high, then the probability of, uh, you know, simply by chance uh, anticipating the seizures uh, would be very high. Yes, that's why we define false positives too, because we didn't want to find, okay, these were patients that were selected for surgery. So they, they were uh, in hospital and uh, their medication was taken away. Uh, how do you say that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Slowly. Withdrawn. Yes, it was being withdrawn. Um, then they had something, each patient had something like five hours of, uh, five days of EEG measured. Okay? Um, and there were mostly patients that were subjected to, that, that could uh, get better with surgery. Those were the cases. Um, there were measures done with scalp electrodes and with internal electrodes. We discarded the ones with internal and used only uh, the two electrodes FP1 and F F7 to make uh, the tests. Then we ran them through our software. Okay? And uh, as you say, if I get an alert anywhere, it would be like, okay, I get, I get a, a true positive. But no, we only consider true positives if it was 60 minutes before a seizure. If it was like two hours before a seizure, we considered it the wrong alert, alert. okay? That's yeah, but what the, was the seizure frequency in that population on average? On average, it was something like uh, 20 seizures in five days. That's a lot, <laughs> yes. So I know you're trying to develop a different prototype that's more aesthetic. So it, will it always have to be on the head, or is the plan to be able to put that battery and recorder other places on the well, body? Well, our, our ideal prototype is to put something like a hearing device behind the ear. So that's our final goal. So uh, with the electrodes, there's no way we have to put, it, put two electrodes uh, on the head. But we want to make it uh, as small as possible to make it look like a hearing device. Not if you have the device that was just shown us. <laughs> no, no, that's the first prototype, no. No, no, I mean, if you use the uh, sub-scalp device. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that we could do. That's, what, that's something we could really do, partner. <laughs> so, of course, I'm coming from the, I, I'm trying to picture, so the electrodes are, how are they applied? They're glued on, like a, I mean, how does that work? Yeah, uh, well, now it's in a cap, so it's, it's inside the cap and, uh, and it's sewed to the cap and it makes pressure on your head, okay? So That's it's it. not glued, it just, how does it know that it gets to the right spot on the scalp? Because uh, it's in the right position here and it's a dry electrode. Okay. So you don't need to glue it. Okay, you don't need any paste the or same something kind like of that. that. Yes, they they have. exactly. Okay. And how would the like end user know that it's actually recording, or you haven't gotten that far in the development? We haven't. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that what they're saying is that their special sauce is the software. Yes. And they're looking out at the audience for the hardware. Yeah. <laughs> we are, are. We are also developing ours, but I mean, it's something that more people are doing, right? And what? How do you know that? How does it predict a seizure? Is there something specific about the EEG pattern that lets yes. you know? Yes. Yes. So uh, basically. You have to uh, eat the EEG pattern. The EEG is a chaotic signal. And when you start finding non chaotic things in the signal, it means uh, your, the neurons are synchronizing. Okay? And that's what you find. Very brief, okay. Dr. Voss. Okay, very, very brief. brief. Uh now you threw me off, Jackie. Oh, the issue is uh, sleep. I think that, you know, a, a large proportion of seizures occur during sleep, so wearing a cap with this yeah. big electronic thing on the back would not really be feasible. So again, I think as an eeg -er, you know, when our patients are in the EMU sleeping, their recording apparatus is really hanging down, typically in a pack, and so you might want to take that into consideration. Yes, thank you. Yes, we will. We, that's, that's our goal, to change 
the pro to, to change the format of the prototype. Yeah, quick, quick question. Quick question. Yeah. No problem, Megan with Capture Proof. So being a technologist, are you looking to utilize the cloud instead of the hardware for your computation to reduce the battery issue as well? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the you. Cloud, are you going to be using cloud? Yes, because Yes, because we'll be able to record 24-7, which is something that is not done yet. And we want to record it, everything in the cloud. We don't want to process it, process it in the cloud because we don't want a lack of connection uh, to, to, to make a, a patient lose an alert. So we want the processing to be here, but we will send everything to the cloud. Got it. Do you have any ambulatory data in patients with less frequent seizures where there's a lot more artifact associated with walking around? No, but I'm looking for it. So if you can help me, I would love it. Right. Okay. Okay, thank you so much.